Story recap here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy and horror film called Bloodfest. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One Halloween night, young Dax watched a horror movie with his mother, Mrs. Conway, who later went to the kitchen to get some chocolate milk. Unfortunately, a patient of her husband in a red mask killed her, and Dax witnessed the man standing over his mother's lifeless body. Then, Dax's father, well-known psychiatrist Dr. Conway, came downstairs to shoot the patient, leaving Dax traumatized. Years later, Dax wakes up from a nightmare and prepares to attend Bloodfest. His sister, Jamie, thinks it's boring, but Dax says it's the greatest horror event of all time. Seconds later, Dr. Conway calls Dax to his office, telling the boy to be with him during his interview on network news. He says he'll be talking about how their family is opposed to Bloodfest, making it clear he doesn't want Dax to attend the event. He then shows Dax his Bloodfest wristband, saying he won't need it anymore. Surprised, Dax points out he's old enough to make his own decisions. Dr. Conway doesn't understand Dax's obsession with brutality, but the boy assures him it's only movies. Despite that, Dr. Conway reminds Dax that those kinds of movies drove his patient to kill his mother. He also adds that Bloodfest is a gathering of degenerates celebrating gore, ignoring Dax's protests as he cuts his wristband. While in a video rental store for his part-time job, Dax watches Anthony Walsh's online invitation for Bloodfest. His friend Sam says they'll find another ticket, but Dax doubts that. His other buddy, Krill, shows up and talks about how excited he is for the event, only to feel bad when he learns about Dax's situation. So he suggests calling Ashley to help Dax get in, but Dax vehemently refuses. However, in the end, Sam convinces Dax to give Ashley a call. Afterward, Dax calls Ashley, an aspiring actress, and congratulates her on her new movie. He's a bit reluctant at first to ask her for a favor, but he soon begs the girl to give him an extra wristband. The three then go to the event held on a 700-acre ranch in the middle of nowhere, and Dax is sure it'll be the best night of his life. There, Ashley introduces her boyfriend, Benjamin, to Dax, saying he's the director of her movie. She also adds he's the reason Dax got inside, and once they leave, the trio quickly explores the place. As they walk around, Dax notices the actor, Roger Hinckley, who played the Arborist in the film series Arbor Day. Dax shows Roger his tattoo to prove to him he's his fan, but the man doesn't care and even admits he's never seen any of his movies. Feeling sorry for his friend, Krill takes Dax away and says the party is about to start. A few minutes later, movie promoter and field producer Anthony Walsh comes on stage. He says they've recreated all of the guests' cinematic scarescapes, adding that every monster or maniac to ever spill blood on the silver screen is there. At the same time, he asks the attendees if they want to make a horror movie to end all scary films before introducing them to a killer wearing a mask, Red. Dax is shocked to see Red, remembering the patient who killed his mother. Then, Walsh asks two girls to join them on stage, telling them not to be shy. Red slits the neck of the first girl before slashing the stomach of the other, and instead of getting scared, the crowd goes wild. Everyone thinks it's just for show but Dax feels something is wrong. Walsh also tells the audience they're already filming, saying everything's real. And that's when people wearing pig masks start killing the attendees using chainsaws. Realizing they're in danger, Dax and his friends immediately try to escape. Sam decides not to head to the main gate since everyone's going there, saying it's going to be a death trap. They then look for another way out and end up in the storage room where they barricade themselves. They hear something seconds later, so Sam and Dax arm themselves before opening the other door, only to find nothing. However, it isn't long before Ashley and Benjamin force their way inside the storage room. Benjamin is pissed because he has no signal, but Sam urges everyone to calm down and think of a way for them to escape. Unfortunately, Krill points out that the gate is locked and the fence is electric. Meanwhile, Ashley reveals there's a back door in a yellow warehouse on the other side of the grounds, saying it can be opened using the keycard that some guy gave her. Upon seeing the keycard, Krill says it's a crypto processor and that he can hack it to open the door. Using a map, Sam finds where the warehouse is, which is near Clown Town. Of course, Benjamin doesn't want to go with them, but Dax says they shouldn't split up. After that, Benjamin manages to call 911, only to realize he's talking to Walsh's underling, Amy, posing as an operator. They are then forced to flee when a chainsaw starts cutting through the thin wall, unaware that they're being watched. From a tower, Walsh instructs one of his men, 
Billy to double check the outer fences. He also talks to Amy about Clown Town, saying he wants to see the attendees all riled up. As if that isn't enough, he tells Amy to catch any call that tries to get out and make people think that help is on the way. When Mac hears that, he tells Walsh that it's cruel to give people a false sense of hope. But Walsh just ignores him and says he wants the guests to feel motivated. Arriving at a fake cemetery, Benjamin asks Ashley for the keycard and says he doesn't trust Dax and his friends. Dax suggests finding a different route as Benjamin walks ahead, making the director think he's afraid they'd be attacked by zombies. Annoyed, Benjamin reminds him they're not in a real graveyard, only to be pulled down to a grave and killed by zombies. As if on cue, zombies suddenly show up forcing Dax and his friends to break into a cabin. Roger is also there, but they don't pay him any mind and proceed to barricade the door. As Ashley breaks down, Sam picks up a hammer and tells Dax they need to come up with a plan. She believes Dax will know what to do since he loves horror movies, saying Walsh is using every trope in the book to kill them. Realizing Sam is right, Dax starts thinking about how to deal with the zombies and takes the hammer from her. However, everyone gets distracted when something bangs on the trap door, and when Krill gets up, a zombie breaks the wall and grabs him. Wasting no time, Dax hits the zombie in the head with a hammer and says that's one way of killing the undead. Sam then takes a machete from the window as Dax and Krill examine the zombie, and the boys see the GoPro on its body that Walsh uses to film them. At the same time, they discover that Walsh is actually controlling dead bodies using electrodes. Sam sees where the signal is coming from, so she goes outside with Dax to destroy it. Unfortunately, Walsh and his minions see their every move. As Dax and Sam try to destroy the signal, zombies get inside the cabin through the trap door. Luckily, Dax pulls the wires from the power box, successfully cutting the signal that controls the zombies. Dax's group uses that chance to flee, so Walsh orders Billy to deal with the situation. Moments later, Ashley reveals to Krill that Lenjamin was not really her boyfriend, implying that she just put up with him to get more movie offers. Dax is busy talking to Roger about his films, but Krill can't help but feel like someone is watching them. Also, Sam finds a town sign of Hotterton, making Roger realize they're in a place that's based on his Arbor Day films. Seconds later, the arborist throws an axe at the sign, causing Krill to run away. The rest also flee when they realize they're in danger, ending up at Hotterton High School without Krill. They then try to get inside the building, where the actor Zachary Levi opens the door for them. Zachary says he was with his friends when they were attacked by cannibals, and as he talks, Ashley expresses her admiration for him. Despite being constantly interrupted by Ashley, Zachary assures them they're safe there, since all the windows are sealed, and he's closed all the doors. He then shows them the key to the building, but the arborist is already there, and he mercilessly cuts Zachary's throat with loppers. Terrified, Dax and his friends lock themselves inside a classroom, while at the same time, Krill continues to run away. Eventually, Krill finds some people gathered around a bonfire. Krill tries to warn them about the situation, saying Walsh made everything real but they don't believe him. One of the ladies, Rain, approaches Krill and teases him as she talks about werewolves and vampires. But as it turns out, she's actually a vampire. Rain's friends start killing the guys around the bonfire as she's about to bite Krill, but Krill doesn't notice that and only thinks she's trying to use her charm on him. Because of that, Rain realizes Krill has never slept with a woman before, so she just lets him go and watches as he takes a torch. In the classroom, Sam says they must get the key from Zachary. Of course, Roger refuses to go out, saying it'll be ironic if the arborist kills him. To get out of that situation, Dax talks to Roger about the arborist's origin story and recounts how the character kills people to avenge his father's death. He then instructs Roger to distract the arborist by pretending to be his dad, and the actor bravely goes outside to do that. While Roger is talking to the arborist, Dax and the girl sneak out of the classroom. Staying in character, Roger asks the arborist to give him the trimmer, but he makes a mistake by calling the big guy Timmy instead of Tommy. Enraged, the arborist pushes Roger and prepares to kill him, but Dax calls his attention as Ashley takes the key from Zachary. With no time to waste, Dax and the girls try to escape. Sam and Ashley open the doors and find Krill, who uses the sharp end of his torch to stab and kill the arborist. After that, Sam finds a way that might lead to the maintenance tunnels, and there, Krill tries to unlock the door. At the same time, Roger compliments Dax for coming up with the idea of distracting the arborist, so the boy says he got it from the scary films he's seen. Sadly, Dax also says his mother was brutally killed, adding that everything scared him for a while except horror movies. For Dax, they must make the most of what little screen time they have. But when Roger asks him if he's living life to the fullest, he only looks at Sam and says not even close. 
Krill eventually opens the door, which leads to Tortureville, another place based on a horror movie. Scared, Krill urges Dax to turn back, but Dax says they must keep moving since Tortureville leads to Clown Town. With no other choice, the group enters Tortureville, ignoring the creepy dolls around. Moments later, they hear a guy screaming for help, so Sam rushes to look for him and finds a park employee, the Trapper, stuck in a trap created by a talking dummy. Sam then tries to help the man by pressing two buttons inside two boxes, only to be tricked and trapped. Meanwhile, the others split up to search for Sam. The Trapper leaves when Dax and Roger arrive, so Sam explains to Dax what happened while Ashley and Krill get stuck in the bathroom. There, an upset Ashley admits to Krill that Lenjamin had the keycard, but Krill assures her they'll find another way out of here. Ashley then takes a shower and listens to Krill as he talks about his dream to sleep with a woman, eventually telling him she can make his dream come true. Concurrently, Dax and Roger struggle to help Sam, who admits she's afraid. Roger then sacrifices himself and takes the girl's place. And after saying the catchphrase from his movie, a massive rock drops on him and kills him. At that moment, Dr. Conway is busy with his interview. He says Bloodfest is a deadly tragedy waiting to happen and then leaves to look for Dax. Back in Tortureville, Ashley and Krill finally get out of the bathroom and join their friends. Ashley tells the others that Lenjamin had the keycard, making Dax feel hopeless about their situation. As if on cue, Red shows up and chases them, so they run and barricade themselves in a room with barrels that are rigged to blow up. Looking for another way out, they climb up the ladder and find themselves in Clown Town. Luckily, the zombies show up and attack the clowns, giving Dax and his friends a chance to flee. However, Ashley stops to get the keycard from a zombified Lenjamin, but Lenjamin thrusts his arm into her back. Despite having Lenjamin's arm protruding from her chest, Ashley still throws the keycard to Krill before they leave. Meanwhile, Walsh kills the people controlling the zombies by blowing them up. Then, Dax and his friends finally reach the warehouse, where they find the Trapper. The Trapper asks them to deal with him once they escape, leading Dax's group to the door. Krill quickly uses the keycard and hacks the door, but Rain shows up and distracts him, eventually biting him in the neck. Enraged, Sam drives a stake through Rain's heart, leaving her to die. Afterward, Krill dies from his wound. The Trapper then successfully opens the door, but Dax doesn't expect his father to show up there. Unfortunately, Dr. Conway shoots the Trapper just as Red grabs Sam. It is then revealed that Red is Jamie, and Dr. Conway tells Dax no one will ever make another horror movie after what happened in that place. Dr. Conway still can't accept that his wife died because of horror movies, and he wants Dax to see that. Then, he asks Jamie to take care of Dax as he goes to the tower, and the girl admits to her brother that they've been planning that event for years. Jamie also tells Dax and Sam to go since everyone there is going to die, saying she'll help Dr. Conway before leaving. However, Amy closes the door before Dax and Sam flee. Dax gives up trying to escape, so Sam reminds him of everything they've been through. Luckily, she changes Dax's mind, and they arm themselves with a machete and chainsaw before stealing a truck. The two head to the tower, where Dr. Conway confronts his partner, Walsh. Dr. Conway is angry that his son almost died, but Walsh just tells him to relax at home. Annoyed, Dr. Conway tries to pull the plug, only to be stopped and informed by Walsh that everything's rigged to blow in the morning. Then, Jamie shows up and tells Dr. Conway that she sent Dax home, unaware he's headed to the tower with Sam. At the same time, Sam and Dax kill the zombies and ghouls that try to stop them. In the tower, Walsh convinces Dr. Conway to activate the pulse, which will make everyone wearing a wristband go crazy and kill each other. It was accidentally developed by Dr. Conway at the asylum, and Mac quickly loses his mind when Walsh activates it. Mac attempts to attack Dr. Conway, but the psychiatrist repeatedly shoots him. Seconds later, Amy comes at Billy, so Dr. Conway gets rid of them. Sadly, Sam also goes crazy and tries to attack Dax, who's not wearing a wristband. Dax crashes the truck into a tower and leaves Sam when she faints, but the girl soon regains consciousness and comes at him. Dr. Conway and Jamie witness everything from a monitor in the tower, forcing the doctor to activate the elevator to help Dax escape. Pissed, Dr. Conway threatens to shoot Walsh, but Dax arrives in the control room and tells them to help Sam. Dr. Conway then assures him that everything will be over soon and finally shoots Walsh, even pointing the gun at Dax to stop him from interfering with his plans. Despite that, Dax makes it clear he's not going anywhere and reveals he was actually afraid of his father. It started when he witnessed Dr. Conway kill his patient, but Dax's fear is now gone, and he even dares his father to shoot him. However, instead of shooting his son, Dr. Conway prepares to blow the place up, so Jamie throws her blade at Dr. Conway and hits him in the chest, sending him crashing through the window and falling to his death. 
Afterward, Sam finally reaches the control room and attacks Dax, who stops her by ripping off her wristband. The two then kiss, and they watch Jamie escape through the window. Once Dax and Sam leave the ranch, the place finally explodes. But despite that, it is shown in the post credit scene that someone has survived, and that person is holding Walsh's staff. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.